In this video, we're going to start with the brand new Android Studio project and lay out the views for our tip calculator. In particular, we're going to lay out eight views where the four text views on the left will describe the contents of what is being shown on the right. The first thing we'll do is create a brand new Android Studio project. So I have Android Studio running here and I'm running Arctic Fox, but any recent version should do. Tap on new project and I'm going to pick the empty activity template. These other ones are useful sometimes, but they bring in a lot of cruft into our application, which could be confusing. So usually I'll just go with empty activity. Let's call our application Tippy. The package name, usually what I'll do is I'll take my domain name or my email address and flip it backwards. So I'll leave that as is, and then pick a location. Make sure you have Kotlin selected as a language. And I'm gonna pick minimum SDK version as API 21. Now I'll tap on finish. And the very first thing I like to do whenever I have a brand new project is simply try and run the starter code. Because if we can't even run the starter code, then something's already gone wrong. Let's make sure that we're at a known good place before we start writing any code. When we create a new project, Android Studio will take some time to set everything up. To run our application, we can go to the drop down in the menu and choose to deploy our app either to an emulator or a physical device. So I'm gonna choose Pixel 2 API 29, which is an emulator I created from before. Hit that green triangle to boot up our emulator if it doesn't already exist, and then build and deploy our project to this emulator. And you'll see the status at the bottom of Android Studio to see the current progress. This might take a minute or two, but when it's done, the app will get automatically sent to the device and brought to the foreground. So all we need to do is wait until we see some action on the emulator. Okay, great, this looks promising. We are seeing an application called Tippy show up in the emulator with the text of hello world, which is a default for an empty project. And this gives us confidence that we are able to successfully run the basic project. Let's come into Android Studio and spend a quick minute talking about the starter files. And actually it's quite simple because there are only two files that we're gonna be concerned with, mainactivity.kotlin and activitymain.xml. You can think of an activity in Android terminology as representing one screen. So with the project that we have right now, we only have one screen and that's referred to as the main activity or the main screen. And that's the business logic that we're defining right here in this file called main activity. In particular, the starter code gives us one function or one method that is already being overridden and that's called onCreate. So the Android system will automatically invoke or call this function when our application is starting up, when it's creating our screen. And the important line here is line nine, set content view r.layout.activity main. So r stands for resources. So what we're saying here is that the content or the UI of our screen should be the layout file in resources defined at activity main.xml. And indeed, if we jump to the definition of this, we can see that it goes directly to activity main.xml. So I'm gonna minimize the project tool window over here to give, a, give ourselves more room. And let's also minimize the attributes pane. So here's exactly what we're seeing in the application, just a blank canvas with hello world. And in particular, if you look at the component tree over here, it might be minimized for you, but you can expand it by tapping over here. We can see the parent element is something called a constraint layout, and it has exactly one child called a text view or a label, and that has an attribute which has value hello world. And that's how we're seeing the hello world text in our running application. In this video, we're gonna spend all our time in activity main.xml because we're only concerned right now with constructing the UI for our application. And in particular, here's how we wanna end. We wanna have eight components on the screen. On the left, we have four different text views. You can think of a text view like a label, which isn't editable by the user. And on the right, we have the actual components being described by the text view. So we have an edit text at the top, which allows the user to enter in a bill amount. We have a seek bar, which allows the user to enter in a tip percentage, and then two more text views at the bottom for the tip and total amount. There's one more thing I wanna call out before we start constructing our layout, which is that there are multiple perspectives of our UI. What we're looking at by default is the design preview, which is what will actually show up on your emulator or device, but you can also drop down into the code tab, which is the actual underlying XML. So you can see how we have the constraint layout and then one child view, the text view, same as design. Split means you look at both. And most of our time is gonna be spent looking at the design preview. And what we can do is go into the palette and drag and drop different components like a text view or edit text that we want. And again, 
that will be represented in the code tab. So just keep that in mind that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between whatever changes you make in the design preview and the underlying XML. So for now, let's go back to design, delete whatever components we have. So we have a single constraint layout with no children. The documentation describes constraint layout as a way to create large and complex layouts with a flat view hierarchy. We are able to describe the relationship between sibling views and parent layouts through a set of constraints that we define. And that allows the Android system to gracefully lay out our UI across phones or tablets of multiple sizes. And the important thing here is no nested view groups. On Android, if you have a very deeply nested view hierarchy, that leads to a lot of performance degradation and something that we call jank or UI lag. And so the constraint layout allows us to create complex views without having nested view groups. Coming back to the tip calculator project, we're gonna lay out all eight views on screen here in a single parent constraint layout. There will be no nested view groups, which is as good as we can get. There are no relative layouts or linear layouts inside of our parent constraint layout. So even if you've never worked with the constraint layout before, take a moment right now to think about how might you position the views on screen here relative to one another such that we can describe it in a flat view hierarchy. Back in Android Studio, the first thing we'll do is drag out a text view representing the top left component of our screen, which is the text view representing the base label. So the first thing I have to do whenever I drag out any component is update the ID to be something more meaningful. So I'll call this TV base label and then update the text to be base. And what you'll notice here is that Android Studio is complaining that this text view is missing constraints. So it only has design time positions. It'll jump to position 00, zero which is the top left of the screen at runtime unless we add constraints. And this is the whole point of the constraint layout. We have to constrain every component vertically and horizontally. So vertically, what we'll do is drag this top anchor point of the TV base label and drag it to the top of the screen. And then in the attributes tab, we will specify the margin of how far away we want it from the top of the screen. And I'm gonna say 48 from the top. Similarly, we want to specify a left margin. So we'll drag the left anchor point and drag it to the parent and specify this to be 32 DP away from the left end of the screen. So now you can see the error went away. We're gonna do the same process now for the other three text views on the left side of the screen. So starting with the one right below the base label is a TV tip percent label. I'll set the text here to be 24%. The text view below that will be the TV tip label. The text will be tip. And then finally, we'll have the TV total label. And the text here will be total. So we have the same issue where we have to constrain all of these horizontally and vertically. Vertically, what we'll do is take the top anchor point for each text view and drag it to the component above it. And we'll specify a margin of 32 dp, which means that each text view should live 32 pixels or 32 dp below the text view above it. So we'll drag the top anchor point and drag it to the bottom anchor point of the text view above it. And again, do the same thing, 32 dp. That constrained each of these views vertically. Now, how about horizontally? If we go back to the desired end state, what you'll notice is that if we draw a vertical line here, all of the components on the left side, they will all be aligned to the right end of that top text view, this TV base label. So that is how we want to constrain them horizontally. And we could actually do this in the design tab. We could say align and then align the right edges. But I'd like to show you how to do this in the code tab. So if I open up the code tab, like we talked about, every change you make in the design tab has a corresponding change in the code tab. So right now we have four text views and that's exactly what we can see here. We have one, two, three, four. Like we talked about, there's right now an error in that we are not constraining these horizontally. So that's why we have this red underline. The vertical constraint is what you can see here. So what we're communicating with this line is at the top of the TV tip percent label should be exactly equal to the bottom of the TV base label, which is the text view above it, along with a margin of 32 DP, which means we want it to be 32 pixels below the component above it. So similarly, what we want to do is specify 
that the end of this component, the TV tip percent label, should be equal to the end of the TV base label. And we want this to be applied to each of the components on the left side. So with that, you can see how that error went away. And if we go back to the design tab, you can see how everything is now aligned. One more thing I want to call out here is that the tools namespace is only used for the purpose of rendering the design preview. Because we have now fully constrained each of these views horizontally and vertically, we don't actually need this anymore. So I'm going to select each of these and delete it. And one more thing is I'm pretty big on having a consistent style and ordering of the different attribute names. So for example, here we have the ending ang angle bracket on the same line or new line. And to fix that automatically for us, I can tap double shift and then just search for reformat. And there's a shortcut for reformatting the code. So if I do that, then you can see how Android Studio helped us to fix it up across the whole file, which I like a lot more. Okay, so let's go back into the design tab. And before we move on to the components on the right side of the screen, one thing I want to do is just a few quick design tweaks. First, I want to make the text a little bit bigger here. So I'm going to make the text appearance medium. So you can see how that made it bigger. And then this TV tip percent label is a bit unique because it's representing the value of what tip percent the user actually chose. So to indicate that it's a little bit different from the others, I'm going to make the text bold here. Cool, I like that. Now let's think about the four components on the right end of the screen. This one is gonna be a edit text. The, below that we have a seek bar, and then below that we have two text views. So let's drag out a edit text, and the one we'll drag is the one which says number decimal. And the difference between all these different edit texts is actually quite simple. It's simply the input type. Because we're dealing with the currency, we want numbers and decimals in ours. Um, below this, we are going to have a seek bar. And then below that, we're going to drag out two text views. All right, let's update the IDs here to be something more sensible. So this is going to be called ET base amount. All right, next we have the seek bar tip. Then we have TV tip amount. And then finally we have the TV total amount. Let's update the text here to be 103.11. And this one, I think we said 1996. Let's do some design tweaks before we position these elements. So these bottom text views, these are the most important part of the whole app. So I'm going to make the text large. The seek bar, I'm going to specify a hard coded width of 200 DP to make it a little bit wider. And then also there's an attribute here called max, which is the maximum amount that the seek bar will hold. And that'll be 30 because we only allow up to 30%. For the edit text, I'm going to set the EMS to be eight, which means how many characters wide, how many characters wide will this edit text be? And eight is sufficient for us. Um, I'm going to increase the text size to be 24 SP. And then finally, I'm going to add a hint here or a placeholder, which is the bill amount. So the user knows what this edit text is for. Now let's think about how to position these. So vertically, the bottom two text views should be aligned vertically. So I'm going to select both of them and then align the vertical centers. And similarly for the ones above those. And then similarly for the tip percent and the seek bar. And you can see how in the design tab, we're actually able to see this nice preview of the constraints which are added. For the bill amount, let's think about how to constrain it horizontally. It'll be 32 DP away from the corresponding text view on the left side. And horizontally, all the other components on the right side, these bottom three, should be aligned to the left end of the bill amount te edit text. So I'm going to select all of them, and I'm going to specify that the left edges should all be aligned. That looks good. The only thing we have to do now is, if we hover over here, we are missing a 
vertical constraint on the edit text. So to do that, I'm gonna go into the code tab. Here's the edit text, ET base amount, and the way we'll communicate the vertical positioning is by constraining the top of this element to the top of the top left view, which is a TV base table. And similarly, the bottom of this view should also be the bottom of the TV base table. So it'll be right in the middle vertically. So if you go back to the design tab, you can see that now the errors have gone away and you can see visually what these constraints look like. All right, if you go back to the design tab, again, we don't need this tool's namespace anymore because we are fully constraining everything. Let's for reformat the code really fast. And then one more thing I want to do is, even though um, this is not needed for the purposes of running the program, just for the sake of developer information, I'd like to label these with a comment. So say, these are the views on the left side. And then after four text views, starting with the edit text, these are the views on the right side. Let's run it to see what this looks like. Okay, awesome. Like we'd expect, this is pretty much exactly mirroring what we see in the design preview. The only thing that I wanna fix up here or improve is that it's a little bit weird that we already have values for the tip and total amount, even though the user hasn't actually entered anything. And that's exactly what the purpose of the tools namespace is that we talked about earlier. So what I'll do is select the corresponding text view. And rather than having a text here, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm gonna move this over into the wrench text area. And that's the tools namespace. So I'm going to move these over into the tools text. And then finally, the same thing over here. So just to show you what that did, if you go back to the code tab, if you look at the TV tip percent label, now instead of having the Android text attribute, it's now the tools text attribute. And if we, if we run the app one last time, Let's see the impact this has on the initial layout. Awesome, this looks pretty good. Hopefully this video gave you a good sense of the power of the constraint layout. One thing I can show you just to demonstrate what we've done is that with these eight views on the screen, they're all located inside of a single parent. And if I drag out that top left text view, everything moves according to that, which is a really nice way of relatively constraining all the views to each other. So the job in the next video is actually to hook up the business logic in the main activity so we can react to the input and compute the tip and total amount. See you in the next video.